This is the old bald geek and this video shows you how to quickly edit registrations on your computer and explain some quirks about registrations and how to avoid them. If you get bored listening to me yammer, this information is available in a PDF file on GitHub along with a number of other files related to using the FP60 and FP90 registrations and some MIDI stuff, at least eventually. You do not need to understand Git or have a GitHub account to download the files, just go to the URL. Registrations, I think, have really two purposes. One, and this is probably what Roland intended, is during for a gig or a show or a church service, you would go into registration mode and then press plus or next registration using the pedal as you want to change sounds during a performance. You'd never leave registration mode. The other way and the way that I'm more likely to use it is that for frequently used patches, quick access to your favorite sounds without having to scroll past all of the cruft. You might enter and leave registration mode multiple times during a playing session. And actually it's some of the weird stuff that happens when you leave registration mode is why I decided to put this information together. You can save the piano's current sound, the tone, split dual mode, ambience, volume, a bunch of other settings to a registration using the procedure described in the manual. Now, recalling a registration is pretty straightforward. Press a few buttons. Saving it, you know, you have to do a press and hold. And then worse than that, you have to enter the name using spin and go. And that gets to be really tedious unless you're a lot better at video games than I ever was. And in addition, there's a bunch of controls and they're kind of tedious to change if you have them much different. So the rest of the video is mostly about how to edit registrations on a computer. First, you save the piano's current registrations to a flash drive. You can use the defaults or anything you already have in, doesn't matter. I find it painful to have to crawl behind the piano to plug in a USB stick, so I have a USB extender cable so that I can plug the flash drive up front. Once you've got the registration file on the stick, put it in your computer, load it up in a text editor. Probably if you're on Windows, you're not going to want to use Windows Notepad. Um, you get junk like this. And the problem is that the file from the piano has Linux style line endings using just new line or line feed, whereas Windows wants the gold DOS style carriage return line feed. Just about any decent text editor will cope with the Linux line feeds. I use Notepad++, Notepad2, and actually as of the end of May 2018, Microsoft promises that after only 25 years, they will upgrade Notepad eventually so that it can handle these line endings as well. In a text editor here, Notepad2, you can see something that looks like this. If you're a geek like me, you will recognize, oh yeah, that's a JSON file doesn't really matter for our purposes. And so you can see for if there's a registration, name, concert piano, which is what you'd see if you pick that one, it's got a whole bunch of settings and we'll be going through those later on. The registration file I saved has exactly 1447 lines in it. And that kind of gives you something to check as you edit the files. If you mangle a file by omitting a line, missing a quotation mark or whatnot, when you load it into the piano, the piano may show error 14. And at that point, it can be useful to open the original UPG file that you saved and your edited file and compare them side by side, or a text diff utility can be really useful for that. For each of the 30 registrations in the file, there are 46 possible settings. And the good news is you seldom need to change more than a few. And because you're on the computer, you can do copy and paste of most of the settings to make similar sounds. So now we'll go through all of those settings. The first setting is the name. This is what the piano prompts you for if you save a registration on the piano. It's 12 or fewer characters, ASCII character set, basically uppercase and lowercase A through Z, zero through nine space, bunch of punctuation marks. The ampersand is really weird looking on the piano display, but there you go. If you use more than 12 characters in the text file, only the first 12 will be used. If you use fewer, that's just fine. Um, that's actually one of the advantages of doing it in the text file versus on the piano. If you do it on the piano, you have to explicitly put spaces over the junk characters at the end that you don't want, which is kind of tedious. And this name is shown on the display on the piano when the registration is selected. 
Next setting is ambience. The value is selected by the ambience button and plus minus when the registration is saved. Range is zero, plain to 10, rich or large space. I'll be giving a little bit of MIDI information as we go on. If you're not using the piano with any other MIDI devices, you can ignore that, but it's kind of interesting. When a registration is selected, a value based on ambience is transmitted using CC91, effect one depth. It's sent on MIDI TX channel, the editable transmit cha main channel, three for the left half of a split and six the second of a dual. The value is scaled, so an ambience value of 10 transmits a MIDI CC value of 127. Key touch is the value of function one when the registration is saved. Range is zero, not touch sensitive, otherwise low numbers more touch sensitive, high numbers less sensitive. Next setting is key transpose, basically transposes the keyboard, which is really nice if you can't transpose on site, um, especially if you're accompanying a vocalist or something. Value minus six semitones to plus five. Um, if you change this, it also transposes the MIDI notes sent by the keyboard. Song transpose, similar, that will transpose um, MIDI songs that you're playing back from, from the piano's memory or from a USB stick if you're playing along with a song. Keyboard mode, split, dual, or single. Zero is single, one split, two is dual. These three settings specify the current tone when the registration is saved. If split is active, it's the right tone. If dual is active, it's tone one. Otherwise, it's single tone. The three settings actually represent MIDI bank select most significant, or CC0, bank select least significant, or CC12, and program change. You can look up the bank and program numbers in the FB90, FB60 MIDI implementation document available on the Roland website. So you see for concert piano, MSB is zero, LSB for bank is 68. Because of the way MIDI defines program numbers, program one has to be entered as zero, such is life. Similarly, if you're doing a split, the next three parameters are split Specify the split tone, same rules as above to see how to determine those if you're editing. Split octave shift, it's the value of the split left shift control when it's saved. This also transposes MIDI messages, note messages sent by the keyboard for a split. Split upper octave shift is the same thing for, for the upper half of a split. Split point uh, specifies the position at which the split occurs. Um, it's a MIDI note number. If you add it on the screen, you will see a note, which is a little easier to do. The factory split point is 54, which is the F sharp below middle C. You can get a MIDI note number chart online or figure it out yourself. Split balance. I have no idea what this one does. It's zero in all of the Roland defaults. From the name of it, I could see, well, maybe this would let you, like, you know, you got a split bass piano, you could pan and put the bass in the left speaker. Have no idea. It doesn't seem to work. I changed it. Don't hear any difference. Dual tone. This is the second tone if you're in dual mode, similar to the left and single tone we saw above. Um, dual tones are sent on channel six. And again, similar to the split mode, this is the octave shift for dual tone two, also transposes MIDI note numbers, octave one, which is the main tone octave shift. Balance, just like split balance, no idea what it does. This one is minus five in all the defaults. Twin piano mode, another mystery. It's one in all the default registrations, nothing in any of the manuals. The FB30, manual describes something called twin mode that splits the keyboard in two, each with a middle C, which I guess you could use to have two people play duets in the same pitch range, which is kind of weird. Um, no mention of that on the FP90 and didn't seem to do anything when I tried it. Okay, Damper pedal part, function 18 if you're doing it from the keyboard. Uh, zero means both shows on the display as left and right. 
one is right, two is left, or tone two. Um, center pedal function. The right hand pedal is always damp or can't change it. The center pedal has a bunch of different functions you can select. Zero is sustenuto, the normal piano function. One is a play stop switch. You can start and stop recorded songs. Two changes the volume of dual tone two. I could imagine using this if you had, say, a piano and then the, the dual was, say, strings. If you don't push down on, a, on the pedal, uh, get no strings, and as you push down, you could bring the strings in. Be good, useful if you're accompanying soap operas or something. Uh, again, this is an analog function, so a switched pedal would just turn it on and off, which I guess could also be useful. Function three is expression. It changes the volume of all of the tones of a split. Um, four is master expression, which is volume, but doesn't send any MIDI. Both layer sends MIDI um, volume control on um, the dual tone two. Expression sends it for both tones of a dual or a split. Master adjusts all of the tones, but doesn't send any MIDI. Five pitch bend up, six pitch bend down. Seven is modulation, which is vibrato on as many tones as I have found, so I don't know if it's really useful. Eight is microphone doubling on off. Nine, microphone echo. I have not used the microphone, don't know how good that is. Ten is actually somewhat useful for the organ voices. It turns the rotary, aka Leslie, function on and off. And since most of the joy of Leslie is listening to it spool up when you turn it on, that could be a useful one for organ voices. Uh, left pedal function, same list as before, except here zero is soft, is a soft pedal on the standard piano function. The other one through ten are as we saw in the previous slide. MIDI transmit channel, settable by function 31. Zero turns it off altogether as one through 16. This channel is used to send MIDI note and other information about a single tone, right tone of a split, left of a dual. The left tone of a split always sends on channel MIDI channel 3. Dual tone 2 of a dual always sends on channel 6 regardless of this one. There doesn't seem to be any way to edit those, which is a little annoying, but there you go. Rotary speed. This is actually not speed. It seems to be just an on-off. It's the initial value of the rotary speaker effect. It works only on certain of the organ voices, basically the electronic, the Hammond-style voices mostly. If you select a registration that has this effect, it will transmit either a zero for off or a 127 for on on MIDI CC12. If you're using one of the normal tones, you can turn the rotary on and off by pressing the organ button a second time. Can't do that when you're in registration mode. So you can either set it initially in the registration or you could set up your pedal to toggle the rotary effect. Modulation speed has a different effect on different tones. On some of the electronic pianos, it's tremolo. Some of the other electronic pianos, it kind of does a detune or chorus effect. On the clavinet, it does a wah-wah effect. You can change it on the piano by holding down a tone button, piano or usually say electric piano, and then pressing the metronome fast and slow buttons. Why they, I suppose they didn't use plus and minus just because it's making the speed faster and slower, but makes it I'm not going to discover that by accident. So it is hidden in the book. The interesting thing, it's not really a modulation. The MIDI CC1 modulation does not affect this. That pretty much does vibrato. Um, upper volume is the setting of the upper part fader when you save the registration. It's kind of a slightly odd effect is if you select a registration, the value here that you put in will override the position of the upper part fader. So say if you had this fader here, but you selected a registration that says 100 full volume, that volume will override the fader. In fact, you could have the fader all the way down and you would get full bottom, full volume. If you then move the fader, then it will, will take over, but the piano's got to see the fader move. When you select the registration, this value is sent on CC7, the normal volume channel. Uh, lower volume, same effect for the lower part of a split or 
the second part of a duel. Again, send CC7 on channel 3, the left of a split or the second of a duel. Uh, microphone effects, I confess I have not used a microphone with this thing. I'm not much of a singer. Um, this is the compression, off, on, um, compression type, normal, soft, hard, mic doubling, on, off, and that one's controllable with a pedal function if you want to use it. Mic doubling type, one or two voices, mic doubling with, level, echo, again, can be controlled with a pedal, echo type, echo level. They're these are not particularly in order. This is just how they are in the UPG file. Center pedal part, and again, you can control, does the center pedal affect both right or left tones? Uh, left pedal part, both right, left. Registration TX channel. This is the value of, of function 26 off 1 through 16. And then similarly, bank and program change for that. This is a little weird. When you select a registration, these values are sent, but your key press information doesn't go out necessarily on that channel. So I'm not really sure what you would use this for. I guess maybe if you had like a pedal clavier, you could use this to change the preset for your pedals. Just seems a little funky, but it's here. You don't have to use it, um, in which case you'd probably want to turn the registration TX channel off so that nothing gets sent. Uh, registration pedal shift. This is actually at the top of the UPG file. It's not part of a given registration. And it's presumably the same as function 23 reg pedal shift. It's just whether you want to use left or center pedal to change from one registration to the next. And once you made your edit changes, you save the file out to the back to the USB stick. Probably want to use a different name so you don't lose the defaults. Old school DOS 8.3 file names, no spaces, that kind of good stuff. Then use function 25 on the piano to import it. Use plus and minus to find your file. Actually using the function keys and exit, you can actually navigate subdirectories on the USB stick, but probably not worth the effort. Okay, we've completed our slog through the 46 parameters in the registration file. When you select a registration, all 46 of those parameters are changed. In contrast, when you switch between the built-in tones, only some of the parameters are changed and the rest stay at their previous values. The effect of this is that when you exit registration mode back into normal tone mode, you may get some surprises. In particular, this was the first one I ran into, the default registration 1-2, Super Light ST. It's the concert piano tone, but it sets the key touch to 5 rather than the default to 50. So only a really light touch is needed to get a loud sound. It backs off upper volume to 100 so to 60 so you don't get blasted, but the touch is really sensitive. And so if you select the registration Super Light ST and then press Escape, the LCD shows concert piano, but it doesn't feel like a concert piano. It's got this kind of real harsh sound because you're basically playing at full, full pounding on it. So it doesn't respond like concert piano. So one hack to overcome that is to have a registration, and I used 1-1 one, one, piano, 1 concert piano, resetting key touch, upper volume, lower volume, and anything else back to the normal state. I mean, you can also turn the piano off then on, but you're like, you get pops in your sound system, and that's generally not a great idea. So if you've tweaked any piano preferences to normal, you might need to change those. It, it's unfortunate, but what are you going to do? The piano comes with a Roland DF10 pedal. This is an analog pedal that generates a continuous range of values rather than simply an on-off. The FP60 and FP90 support half damper operation on the damper pedal. So you can use this kind of pedal to get a fine control over the damper hold effect, uh, simulating the, an acoustic piano, how high you lift the dampers off the strings. I confess that after playing piano for 50 years, I never knew there was such a thing as half damper technique. That's probably because I've played 
sad, old, and out of adjustment pianos most of my life, and I've never encountered a piano in good enough shape to use that technique. Pianos out of adjustment, some dampers lift and some don't, which John Cage might have enjoyed, but I do not. If you don't intend to use half damper technique, you might consider using a simple foot switch on your damper pedal and the DF-10 as your left or middle pedal. As you remember back when we looked at center pedal function and middle pedal function, there are some continuous features like expression, modulation, and pitch bend that might be interesting to work with. As with most keyboards, any pedal continuous or switch should be connected to the piano before you turn the piano on so the piano can detect what kind of pedal it is, what's the unpressed state. If you decide to use a foot switch as a damper, you may need to turn down the damper noise in Piano Designer, otherwise the abrupt on-off pedal transition can cause this kind of funky ghost on the strings effect, which I confess I kind of remember doing when I was first learning piano many, many years ago. Or you can do actually what I did just last week, is buy an RPU-3, the Roland 3 pedal, um, unit has three wonderful analog pedals, um, minimizes cabling, and just sits better under the piano. Okay, here's a few ideas that you might use registrations for. Obviously, if you're planning a set and you want to switch from piano to organ to whatnot, you make your registrations do that. A few other things, you, know, you can have a registration, as I mentioned earlier, to return to standard piano settings. So if you want to switch out of registration mode, and back into the normal tone mode. Electric Piano Tone 1 1976 suitcase is a nice road sound, but the stereo ping pong tremolo makes me nauseous, especially through headphones. You can set modulation depth to zero to disable the tremolo entirely, or you can set it to a higher value like 80 to give kind of a shimmering sound. Similarly, the harpiness strings number eight, it's a nice sound, but it's got this half second echo effect that gets old after about two trips across the canyon. And it's not affected by modulation speed or any other control I have found. The bass harp sound is pretty much identical to GM2 harp, which is other number 124. And using a registration makes it a lot easier to access than pressing the plus sign 124 times. There's a number of other tones with obnoxious echo, but they do not seem to have exact non-echo equivalents. Uh, maybe someday Roland will have pity on us and give us a way to turn off the echo. Some of the electronic organ sounds, the combo jazz organ in particular, sound an octave lower than other tones. And you can certainly move your hands up the keyboard, but you could also make a split using that tone and then use split upper octave shift to transpose the tone up an octave. If you set the split point to zero, you could ignore the left hand part and have the Whole keyboard B organ. On the other hand, sometimes I find that uh, I want the left tone of a split to play pitches above the split point or the right tone to play pitches below the split point. You're playing a scale and all of a sudden you switch from piano to acoustic bass or whatever your low split. But you can kind of give yourself a little more elbow room by using the octave shifts to move the left tone down an octave or the right tone up an octave and then put the split point to give yourself some more space. And maybe that's why the combo jazz organ is pre-shifted, I don't know. MIDI tips, this isn't really a document on MIDI. I hope to make another one of those if anybody watches this video. But the receive channel for the piano keyboard is four rather than channel one. It's not in the documentation anywhere and doesn't seem to be any way to change that. You can use MIDI TX CH setting to affect MIDI messages sent by the piano. So when you hit keys, they go out that way, but that doesn't affect receive. It sends channel three for split left and channel six for dual tone two, and those don't seem to be editable. The piano is multi-timbral. You can send it MIDI messages on any of the 16 channels and it will respond and they can each have different tones and parameters, which is, which is pretty nice. And if you send CC program change note messages on channel 4, they affect the sound produced when you play the piano keys. But if you send MIDI messages on channel 3 or 6, they do not affect the sounds produced by the piano keys in split or dual mode. So really, you've got like 
18 channel multi timbral 16 MIDI channels plus the uh, bass and split used by by the piano when it's playing one thing that confused me if you send MIDI messages on channels other than four the volume is controlled by the song volume fader now my sound guy reflex is if I have a fader that's not being used I turn it down and I'm not I don't play back song so I had the song volume turned down and I thought the piano had broken because you know I wasn't getting any MIDI play mid give it MIDI and nothing was happening uh, the drums and piano partner weren't coming out and eventually tech support told me oh you got to turn song volume up not in the manual but sure enough it works ambience and CC 91 MIDI reverb are not the same CC 91 does control reverb on the MIDI channels but not on channel 4 you know which uses the ambience CC 12 sent to the piano on any channel seems to affect all the channels which is a little weird if I were the boss of Roland I would make a couple changes to the software so one is if you switched out of registration mode it would restore whatever the tone and settings were in effect before you entered registration mode rather than leaving you kind of half in half out um, Two, most of the things in the registration it would be nice if they were in the UPG file were, would be optional um, if a parameter was specified it would change it and if the parameter was omitted it wouldn't be changed from the previous setting I'd really like this for transpose in particular um, if I set transpose to suit a particular vocalist it'd be nice to be able to switch between registrations without, without having to make a custom registration set for each you know, transposition um, not a big deal but it would be nice split mode has an editable split point it'd be nice if dual mode had one as well to specify the highest note of tone 2 tone 1 could still cover the whole range I'd use it mostly to beef up bass parts for example on a pipe organ sound you might have tone 2 be the same tone as tone 1 but down an octave for the bottom few octaves of the keyboard much the way an organist would use a 16 foot coupler on a pedal part some of the tone wheel organs are a little thin in the lower octaves again you might double those with one of the bass tones you know you could replace the organ tone with a split but it's nice to keep the organ in there as well the other thing is that the default MIDI receive channel really should be editable it's four which is just weird and that about wraps it up as I mentioned earlier most of this information is available in a PDF file on github there's a number of other files there and I'll probably be adding to those over time as I learn more about this great instrument and I'm the old bald geek and God is my barber <laughs>